Hello everybody, welcome back to the Bad Pookers podcast. My name is Jack and this is my review of Smackdown Live and 205 Live, which I've just watched. Um, I am outside, I'm currently at work, I'm on a break so I can record this. Um, so you might be able to hear the birds as it is currently, what, four o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I don't know how well you can hear me, but I've done a few tests and it seems all right. Anyway, to start off Smackdown Live, we had Miz TV and we all thought Daniel Bryan was going to come out and they were going to have a little bit of a brawl, but he did his little promo about his kid, which the Miz has usually been doing, and he called out Daniel Bryan, but Daniel Bryan didn't come out. Um, instead, it was Big Cass that came out and Big Cass pulled off quite a decent promo and I was surprised and it made me quite excited to see Cass back um, yeah it was a really weird a really weird feeling <laughs> to be excited to see Cass back um, when he first came out and grabbed the mic I was really sceptical really sceptical I did not want to see it <laughs> at all but he, he pulled it out the bag to say the least um, there was then a backstage segment where Daniel Bryan was on the floor and it was pretty obvious that Big Cass attacked him. And they did that thing where they cut the commercial and then when they come back, they say, oh, he's in the trainer's room. We're going to get an update on him. We all knew what was going to happen and who did it. Anyway, um, after that, we had the iconic duo came out. They had a jobber entrance. Good way to... What's the word? Demonstrate your talent, your new talent on the roster by giving them a do- jobber entrance. I'm not the one booking it. <laughs> um, but they came out, they did a, a weird promo, and then they had a match with Becky Lynch and Asuka. Uh, Asuka's first match on SmackDown Live, which I thought she had one before. Apparently not. Um, Iconics won via a dirty pin I can't remember which one of the Iconics pinned Becky Lynch but she had her feet on the rope so Asuka's on a two loss streak now I honestly thought that Iconics were going to lose and then they would have just dropped out and been lost in the pack but they've won, won their second match well, first match as a duo as a tag team and yeah, they beat (laughs) Becky Lynch and Asuka um, what do we have next? AJ Styles promo, where he set up a match. He spoke to Shane McMahon, set up a match, and later on the main event it was going to be Shinsuke Nakamura with Rusev and Aiden English against AJ Styles and the Club. So, Bullet Club, if you will, are back together again. It would have been so much better if Finn was on SmackDown, but I guess they can do this with Finn on SmackDown. Maybe later on in the year, Finn will go over to SmackDown. Um, We then had an Uso and Naomi promo. Um, After Naomi interfered last week or something, it was really weird to watch. (laughs) But then we had Jimmy Uso versus Eric Rowan, which Jimmy Uso won via a distraction from Naomi. And to win, he did a really cool jumping super kick looking thing. Because <laughs> obviously, uh, Eric Rowan's taller than Jimmy Uso. So we, it was really cool to see. But yeah, I think that's Blood and Brothers' first loss. I think so. I think it was. Um, we. It, it was essentially a squash match until Naomi came. And yeah, Jimmy Uso <laughs> pinned him. Amazing. Um, they probably just give him a loss before they absolutely squash you, so he's getting it on Friday. Uh, we then had Carmella and Charlotte doing a contract signing. Um, and then Carmella came out first and moans that they called out the champion first, which that's one of my biggest bugbears when they call out a champion first. Should never happen. So I, I was really happy when she said that. Um, we then watched a montage clip or something. And she told the crowd to stand up and cheer, which they didn't. So we then watched half of it again, 
the same clip, half of it again. Charlotte then came out, didn't say a word, signed the contract, slammed Kamala's head through the table. I've hit myself now. Through the table, and she walked off. Came in, came in, caused havoc, walked off. So that match is going to be for Backlash. Obviously, the, the women can't wrestle in the Greatest Royal Rumble. I'm not going to go over it again. <laughs> um, we all know how everyone feels about that. But, like I said, I'm not going to go into it. And what do we have? Shelton Benjamin versus what we thought was going to be Jeff Hardy. Uh, Shelton Benjamin got a double entrance. And Jeff Hardy came out. And just like last week, instead, it was vice versa this time. Randy Orton came out and cut him off. And then we got Shelton Benjamin versus... Randy Orton, which Shelton Benjamin won. Um, there was a lot of shock results. It was weird. Um, and not not like shock results like Chad Gable beating Jinder Mahal. Like, proper unexpected results. Um, basically, what happens? A masked man came and attacked Jeff Hardy, who was at ringside. And it was obvious it was Sunil Singh. Like... <laughs> He was even dressed as Sunil Singh. It was completely obvious. Randy Orton took the mask off. It was Sunil Singh. Oh, my God. Uh, RKO'd him. And, but that gave the distraction for Benjamin to do his finisher. I don't know what it's called. And pin Randy Orton. So, obviously, that carries on. Because, obviously, it's Jinder versus Jeff on Friday for the United States title. So, that was a good little storyline progression really uh, we then had the bar and a new day promo so I don't know the, the bar and a new day would probably bring quite a lot of magic to the ring um, but it kind of settled it like that the bar were going to lose on Friday like that assured it the bar we're going to lose. Um, we then had AJ and the club hug it out. Um, that was nice to see. We then had Daniel Bryan come out of the trainer's room. And he said that it was Big Cass. Obviously it was Big Cass. And he said that he spoke to Paige. And it's going to be Daniel Bryan versus Big Cass at Backlash. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough holds out for The Miz a little bit longer. Um, whatever. We then had the main event versus Bullet Club, if you will, or The Club, uh, versus Nakamura and Rusev Day. Aiden English did not pull off a heel promo. I just, they're flip-flopping so much, I just don't understand it. Um, but what happened, it was quite a good match, to be fair. There's some good wrestlers in there, obviously. There was We Want Balor chance, which I thought was quite cool. Um, pardon me. But the ending was, of the match was Shinsuke Nakamura, who's got a new theme, by the way, a new theme song. It's not Matt's theme song, unfortunately. If you haven't seen his forfeit, WrestleMania forfeit, go check it out. I'll probably put it up in one of these corners, wherever it be. Um, but yeah, if you can't find it, it'd be, it was the last video on the channel. Um... But yeah, Kinshasa from Nakamura to the back of Gallows' head. One, two, three. AJ Styles and jumped in and started pummeling Nakamura. And then he started doing his fist of fury, whatever they call it, where he rapid punches. Nakamura low blows him again. He just wants to fondle him. That's all he, he just wants to fondle him. Um, he then has AJ Styles in the corner. Nakamura is going for the Kinshasa on AJ. And Carl Anderson gets in the way, gets Kinshasa himself. And then a really awesome thing happened where um, Nakamura picked up Carl Anderson, looked at AJ. AJ was kind of trying to crawl to get into the way, but he couldn't quite get there. And another Kinshasa to Carl Anderson while um, AJ was like writhing around the floor trying to crawl it looked really good go back and watch it on the highlights uh, when they're released I assume they're already released but that looks really cool and 
I don't want to look forward to their match, AJ versus Nakamura on Friday, because I know how much hype we had going into their WrestleMania match, but I'm sure it'd be good, I'm sure it'd be better than their WrestleMania match. And that was SmackDown. Um, it was a very, very good show, in my opinion. Um, it did much better than than Raw. Raw was just messy. This actually seemed like there was a storyline going on on SmackDown. So that was very good. Anyway, 205 Live, we had the gauntlet match for the number one contendership of the Cruiserweight title for the Royal Rumble event. The greatest Royal Rumble, sorry. So we started off with Mustafa Ali and TJ Perkins, TJP, as he's now called. Um, there was a little spot in the match where Mustafa flipped off the top rope, landed, TJP then jumped and kind of like drop kicked from the rope onto Mustafa Ali's knee, and then he proper sold the knee um, for the rest of the match, but then he hit his 450, is it, off the top rope onto TJP, one, two, three, Next person out to face Mustafa Ali was Drew Gulak, the submission specialist of the Cruiserweights. And it was really good. <laughs> this bit of the gauntlet match was really, really good. Um, it ended up being Mustafa was on the top rope. Gulak, after working the knee pretty much all match, Gulak pushed him off the top rope. It knocked Mustafa Ali out came in, I can't remember what Gulak's submission's called, but um, he locked that into Mustafa, he did not tap, he was already knocked out, because the ref called it there so it shows Mustafa Ali as I don't want to say an Iron Man because it wasn't an Iron Man, Iron Man's the wrong words but res- resolute, I guess he he never gave up so he's got that going into a, a storyline maybe with Gulak um, so yeah, Gulak beat Mustafa Ali. I wouldn't have moaned if that was the final two. I was really hoping one of those two were going to win. Uh, but Gulak, the next person to come out was Tony Nice, And this was a squash, absolute squash. Tony Nice just tore into Gulak. And he had he did that knee where they, he has him sat in the corner and kneed him right in the face. Went to, uh, He dragged him into the middle of the ring. Went to pin him. Didn't dragged him back over to the corner and dropped his knee pad so he went to do it again the running knee to the side of the face missed Gulak literally his only offensive move except for like a slap to the stomach um, Gulak cinched in his submission Tony Nice taps walked off in so much frustration the amount of storyline in this gauntlet match was amazing <laughs> to be fair, and considering why most people don't watch 205 Live is because there isn't much storytelling. This match had tons of it, tons of storytelling. It was good. But Gulak went to the final two, and his opponent was Kalisto. And Kalisto won. Um, Every little match had a different aspect to it, which I thought was amazing. Um... Gulak kept on running away from Kalisto, trying to catch his breath, if you will. And he tried to cinch in his submission finisher. Um, Kalisto managed to um, counter it and flip it into... I can't remember the name of the finisher, of Kalisto's finisher, but you know where he flips over and then plants them on their back. And he won that way, so we're going to get Cedric Alexander versus Kalisto at the Greatest Raw Rumble. I don't think anyone wants a Kalisto. Um... My, I, I really wanted Gulak to win. Um, I love Gulak. I think he's amazing. But Kalisto's won. I'm sure it would be an absolutely fantastic match between him and Cedric. Cedric's going to win. Cedric's going to win. Um, no sign of Buddy Murphy this week. I put on Twitter about five minutes ago. Well, I say five minutes ago, not during this. Five minutes before I started this. That I seriously think we all see a Drew Gulak versus Neville in a submission match soon. I hope soon. Um, I know that's a bit out there at the moment with the whole Neville thing, but that would just be awesome. Gulak versus Neville in a submission match. (sighs) If that ever happens, that would be absolutely amazing. But anyway, that was my review of SmackDown and 205 Live. SmackDown, much better than Raw. Um, A lot less messy. 
was was good. To be fair, was good. Didn't feel like a go-home show, to be fair. Felt like a good show. Um, 205 Live, I say this every week. Um, if you're not watching 205 Live, you're missing out. It is the better WWE viewing at the moment. Um, in my opinion, obviously. You might have a different opinion. But yeah, decent viewing for a Tuesday night. I, I'm kind of looking forward to Greatest Royal Rumble. I don't want to be, but I kind of am. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's everything. That's my notes done. Um, if you like that, leave a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you have got any questions for us for our podcast, uh, I think we're recording it on Thursday night. Uh, it should be out on Saturday or Friday. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments. And I shall speak to you maybe tomorrow night for NXT. Depends if I stay up for it. But yeah, I'll catch you later.